Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I'd like to thank you for joining us to the panel discussion about and the winner is how ins investors spend their money. Um, and uh, we are talking about financing uh, media projects in general. And I'd like to introduce you at first the three panelists. On, your, on my right side, it's Mark Engner. He's uh, agent finance and distribution, uh, an agent from, oops, no, don't do this anymore. Try this one. Hello, hello? Uh, it, it works, it works, yeah. So, sorry. He is Mark Engner. He's an agent from the finance and distribution division of uh, William Morris Endeavor. As an agent in the finance and distribution division of uh, WME, Mark Engner uh, works to create advantageous financing packages and innovative distribution deal structure structures for the group finance clients and the agents content creators. Uh, to the left side, outside, it's uh, Paul Brett. He's director of Prescience Film Finance. Paul has worked in the media uh, since leaving university 28 years ago. He has worked at uh, Video Arts, Catalysts, TEN, the uh, Movie Channel, Media Collection International, Paramount, and so on. Paul developed and implemented the UK exhibition and distribution strategy over a three years per period at the British Film Institute, UK Film Council, and uh, leaving to found pre-signs with, with Tim Smith, sorry. And uh, to my left side, it's uh, Philip Grindley, his partner at PricewaterhouseCoopers and works in the transaction crew providing advice to both finance, financial investors and corporate clients investing in the entertainment and media sector. First of all, I want to ask you as the audience, is there uh, any expert for financing media project here? Please raise your hands. No, no one? So we should keep it uh, clear and simple. Um, Mark, maybe you before, uh, at the first. Um, could you characterize a typical case of your professional experience financing media? It's a very general question, but could you characterize uh, the conditions uh, in the American market financing media projects? And talk a little bit about your work. So my job is to procure financing for our clients' projects, our writers, directors, and actors. I also represent film funds <clears throat> and the way they look at spending their money in the media space, but predominantly film. Um, there's you know, a couple of different ways we raise money. One is through the traditional route where we're using bank financing, equity, um, pre-sales for, uh, through uh, foreign sales companies that put a price on individual territories as they go out to the marketplace. Um, and then m more of the less traditional route, which is I, what I call the emotional investment, people that are looking to get into the film space that are high net worth individuals that put equity into films. I'd like to put the same question to Paul. Um, we operate in a very similar manner. The film industry is global, and so our model is based on um, raising money for films that will sell in the international marketplace. And Europe is particularly vibrant at the moment, and it's no offense to my colleague here, but at the moment in our books, we put America in as zero. Uh, although it's the largest market in the world, it doesn't have any money which is unfortunate uh, in terms of pre-buying a film for distribution. And Just plus. to add on to what yeah. Paul said really quickly sure. so that you all understand when he says the marketplace is at zero in the United States, um, 
distribution, uh, the distribution market in the United States is uh, shifting drastically with uh, technological advancement. Um, this, is a pro this is not a problem, but a shift that's not only happening in the domestic marketplace, but is also happening in the European marketplace where traditional DVD and um, cable, uh, cable deals for films are shrinking. And in the US, the digital marketplace is slowly growing. So the marketplace is having trouble keeping up, which has left a lot of distribution companies in the US hesitant to make a significant advance, financial advance, against a film when they want to purchase it. But uh, the same question. OK. <laughs> I'm perhaps a little bit the odd one out here um, at PricewaterhouseCoopers. We, we deal clearly across the whole media space, and so not just film. Uh, my particular job, I'm involved in advising companies, investing in typically German media companies, um, but it's also more of a wider European role as well. So the sort of things that we would do would be you know, assessing business plans, um, not so much particular individual projects, but more companies um, for other companies that are looking to acquire them. And so the sort of things that we would do would be, as I said, assessing business plans, due diligence, M&A advice, valuation of rights we would also do as well. Could you please describe uh, especially the German conditions for financing? Okay. I think now, I think as, 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 uh, as Mark was saying, you know, I think a lot of the excitement now is not so much around the, the content, but actually more around the technology and the distribution of that, of that content. Um, you know, what we're seeing a lot of now is um, changes in, in distribution models, sort of video on demand. Um, you know, the, the DVD is sort of gradually, slowly being replaced by Blu-ray, if that ever you know, does eventually replace it before being taken over by the digital download. Let's wait and see. Um, but I think it's a very exciting market at the moment. But essentially, I think all of the excitement is really more around the technology and the distribution than perhaps around the content. What are the conditions in, in the UK? Um, the business Paul. is booming. Uh, that uh, There's growth in uh, theatrical revenues, which has largely been driven by 3D. And uh, uh, television is, is growing as well. Um, it's DVD that is plateauing and has now gone into decline, and that decline has not been rescued by DVD. So I think that the UK is pretty much the same as every other market in that those three broad parameters are in place, that theatrical is growing, TV is growing, but the physical ownership of material on DVD is, is uh, declining as both my colleagues have said uh, everything switches to digital. The issue is at the moment that no one can accurately project um, how to monetize those revenues. Uh, so there's a great deal of hesitancy in the market as um, uh, we know that people are watching films digitally, but because the piracy levels are so colossal, um, it's, it, it's not so easy to monetize uh, those revenues as it was before. I'll just perhaps add, um, I think in Germany, what we've seen, we, we have a publication called the Price Waterhouse Coopers um, Global Entertainment and the Media Outlook. And, and one of the things that that shows is that in Germany, the market is, is perhaps a little bit behind that of the US and the UK. I think people in Germany still like to buy a DVD and have it on their shelves, and they're not that yet ready for downloading something. Thank you, Germany. You're propping up the international <laughs> propping up the rest of the market. I think the one thing that's very important to pull from this conversation as we move forward is we really can't think in, in generalities anymore. The marketplace is completely fragmented. And for low budget, small niche market films, the digital marketplace is a very interesting opportunity for you know, 3D films and very big budgeted films obviously are still a theatrical event and people want to go and see those in theaters. It's what's happening in between in the marketplace for the mid-range budget film or for the, especially in the U.S. right now, for the specialty and independent film where people would go to theaters 10 years ago because they wanted to have, uh, they wanted more character, more backstory, um, more of a character study in general. Now they can find that on television. So it's really 
being thoughtful if you're out there raising money for a film or if you're out there directing or producing a film to really kind of go online and, and look at where the marketplace is shifting because we can speak in general terms, but that may not apply to your situation. Just something to, th just something to think about. Are there any questions from your side? Not at the moment. Okay, I'll ask later. Um, Paul, um, could you please describe uh, the role of the public uh, subsidies and funding for financing media projects inside the UK? There's a special case about the UK Film Council and uh, the question how the subsidies work. Yeah, um, the subsidy hasn't been affected at all. Uh, there's still a 20% tax credit in the United Kingdom. Uh, however, what is being referred to um, by our colleague here is that the UK Film Council has been shut down and will cease to exist in March 2012. Um, so they uh, were the, uh, they allocated the lottery funds so they could add up to another 20% of a film's budget, but there is a process that will be announced at the end of this month where those funds will be reallocated to another body, such as the British Film Institute. Um, but by and large, the, the uh, subsidy that is provided as a tax credit to incentivize films to come to the UK, inward investment, and for the um, production of homegrown films, uh, has not altered and remains at 20%, which is fairly consistent with the rest of the world. Where we still lag behind is that we are not an easy country to co-produce with. Um, we don't favor that, um, uh, which is wrong and is uh, a great pity, and hopefully that will change over the next decade. Uh, tax, uh, tax subsidies in general have become essential because budgets have to be reduced in general. I, I have a conversation daily with either our actor, writer, or director clients to say, you have to, you have to lower your budget. It's not market standard. So in the states, tax subsidies state by state, and they're all very different, become essential in order to get a film uh, greenlit. For example, a lot of production over the past 10 years has been driven to Louisiana because they have a high tax subsidy. Um, our agency was involved in helping build out uh, production facilities in Michigan in order to stimulate the economy there, but provide opportunities with a tax subsidy rate of 40%. Obviously, it doesn't net out to that amount, but it's helping drive production, and the conversation we're having with our artists to say, one, this will help you reduce the budget of your film, and two, you'll be able to really put more money up on screen this way. For, so if you're having to reduce your budget, this gives you the opportunity to still make your film look bigger. Uh, without tax subsidies in the United States, we'd be in a, uh, dramatically different marketplace. And what's about the German situation? Yeah, I, I think in Germany it's, um, I think in terms of the, the total amount of subsidy, it's, again, it's in line with what, with what Paul was saying, you can get about up to 20% of your of the film costs. Uh, there are also subsidies for distribution as well. Um, the thing about Germany to remember is that it's very much on a regional basis, so it can be quite complicated in looking at okay, where exactly you want to shoot because it would depend on, you know, there are different subsidies in different regions in Germany. Um, I think one of the discussions that's going on at the moment in these particular regions is, you know, Hessen, for example, where we are now, is, you know, how can we make Hessen a better place, a more attractive place to film? And, you know, what is the benefit to Hessen of increasing subsidies in film? And then, of course, where is that money going to come from at the end of the day? Because there's a larger, you know, higher level political sort of, uh, aspect to it in that you know, can countries afford to carry on subsidizing films in the way they have done. Um, Mark, in the US, uh, is there a special uh, called kind of comp competition between uh, the, the games and the film industries in general uh, for the same sources 